morning everyone i have spoiled myself and bought myself a brand new table saw if you haven't seen my old table saw you'll understand why this is a pretty exciting moment um bought this in what is known as the um boxing day sales after christmas so december 26 it's january 24th i think on holidays so i don't know um and I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for fine weather to unbox this. And the main reason for that is you see me outside. I'll show you my work site in a moment. But I've basically worked for six years with a homemade table saw that I made out of an old Makita circular saw that I had and it served me well for the past six years and I have been researching what sort of saw I'd like to get and I was looking at the Makita job site saws it looked good I've seen a lot of people online with these though um, DeWalt is a very good brand I know that my drop saws at home are DeWalt that's really weird it's saying this way up and it's fragile and it's sitting on its top see legs I wonder if that's so that you can get at all the stuff that they pack underneath it first like possible accessories the instruction manual more accessories I might have a quick look at these before I open anything else up okay. all right so this this box contains the miter gauge which I have been told is very good and the dust port adapter and tools obviously for removing and changing the blade so just set those aside for a moment look at the instruction manual once I've got everything out because I'm a bloke <laughs> won't look at it just yet okay this box contains the blade cover and riving knife. Now if you, this part is an absolute upgrade if you've ever seen my old saw. I don't know what I did with the riving knife on it and it doesn't have a guard over the top. Instructions. So I said, I think I'll try and tip this up. Looks like there might be more stuff packed away in the sides of the box. No, it's just protective packaging. All right. Now, don't want to grab onto something that's not going to be helpful. Okay, I might bring you over here to have a bit of a look. So some of the things that I've heard about this that made me go for this as opposed to um, the Makita 
is I've heard that the ruler is incredibly accurate, like, and the fence that you put on, um, which is here by the look of it. Yep, so there's the fence to be installed. The fact that it has a good bump stop off button rather than I'll show you my other saw. I like that the controls are one area. So you've got your your blade raising, then you loosen loosen this and it allows you to tilt the blade and lock it on again. So you get a blade tilt. Not like on a not like on a full on table saw. You are manually doing it here, but this is much easier to do and easier to lock than my previous saw and you can still raise and lower the blade. I was trying to figure out how I was going to get this up. I noticed there's a, a lock, lock on this side which allows you to adjust the saw fence with just the little dial here and then it locks in place and the fence just two little cam locks there in order to flip it back around. I can't remember if this is meant to be set up to be on one side or the other. I'm going to assume this needs to go here because all the instructions are right there. That's in place. Move it slow or fast. And I think there was also This bit here for if you're doing really thin parts or if you are hanging it out further you've got something to stop it from material from going down and under push stick on the side it is starting to rain so in order to put this away I'm going to lock it back underneath Was that how was that locked under here? I don't even remember. It was just like that. No, it wasn't. It was further under. Move you so I can get this out of the way. When I bought it, it did come with a stand as well, thrown in, and that's $164 I think on their website at the moment, so that was a pretty good deal. While the rain's deciding whether it wants to come or not, I might unbox this stand that came with it. Hardware of some sort. More hardware of some sort. And the stand. Good deal of packing. I don't think it actually needed that big a box. And I'm about to lose my glasses with the microphone. I'm 
assume that in these boxes might be extra parts of the legs as well. Are you kidding me? See this box? It contains this and this. And this, I'm assuming, is the extra leg bits. Gosh, must be not. Yeah. So that's the extra leg bits. Now, Here's my dilemma. My space is not the greatest. Um, which I might show you. Here is my workshed. As you can see, it's a bit of a disaster. That's usually folded into the corner. And as you can see, like I've got my garden tools in here as well, including like my weed whacker and that sort of stuff up there, chainsaws. And that's why I'm trying to build a garden shed to get this stuff out to make this just my work shed like it once was. But being that it's like this and that saw is heavy, I don't particularly want to be lifting it in and out of here. And I don't think I'm quite set up to have it. I'm like, I can't set it up permanently in here. Like even my my drop saw is on top of this thing so I could be wheeled out. You can see my drill press and that sort of stuff so it can be wheeled out. Workbench, disaster zone. Got to really clean this place up. But with that in mind, having a stand like that, which is foldable, but solid, um, I'd have to carry that out, carry the saw out, set it up. A lot of tradies will have that um, the saw set up on a trolley, um, kind of like a dolly. And I've seen that for sale for about 400 and I think it's about 440 at the moment, 439 for the long term. I may as well start in the short term and buy that to set up the saw because I don't want to be lifting that in and out of the shed if I need to work it. I'd prefer to just have it standing in the corner, wheel it out on its trolley, set it up just like a tradey would. I can also then wheel it up to the ute, throw it into the back of the ute, or put it into the back of the ute. When I get it to where I want to use it, take it out, wheel it off, much better solution. So I'll probably look at that and I might box up and sell this stand. When I was researching the, the saws, um, I always looked at the DeWalt and always balked at it because it was well over a thousand dollars. But it's definitely a top tier saw in terms of being a job site saw. I went for the ten and a quarter inch model, two two thousand watt over the eight and a quarter, 1700 watt model. Um, because my old saw was a 2000 watt saw and it had a 12 inch blade. Um, so it had a bigger custom cutting capacity than this is going to, but the 2000 watt means that it's going to be able to handle hardwoods and that sort of stuff like my old saw. Um, in the Boxing Day sales, it was also reduced to nine, was either nine ninety nine or nine eighty nine from close to thirteen hundred. The Makita job site saw their one was eight hundred seven ninety nine. So I obviously went with the Dewalt. I think they're a very good brand. But most of my cordless tools though are Makita. Um. And that's kind of why I was looking at Makita. Do I make my shop a Makita shop? But no, 
I went for the saw, which I think is going to be better value, um, especially when it's, yeah, it was reduced so much I couldn't say no. I also had a redemption offer with it, um, which was a DeWalt random orbital sander and a set of DeWalt chisels. I'm just waiting for those to arrive now. And now I'll show you my old saw compared to the new one since the rain looks like it might hold off a second. Recall I said this was a pretty mighty upgrade of a saw for me. Here is my old table saw made up from one of those workhorses that you can buy and my old saw underneath if you wanted to raise and lower the saw that's how you'll do it lock it back in if you want to adjust the angle which is why I've got a big hole on here you'd have to loosen loosen the wing nut at either end there is there and there so that you could tilt it for turning it on I wired a switch into it hoping this is in frame and the fence was this with a couple of quick grip clamps on the end and like I said it served me really well it cut up all the timber materials for the shed here for all the framing I did in there it cut up all the materials for my work shed when I was framing that up it's done multiple things around the house it's been really good and for a dodgy little worksite saw it's very portable I'll lock that again right that's not that heavy the brushes and the commutator burnt out on that and stopped working I cleaned the brushes and the commutator it started working again but one of the brushes was damaged and so it stopped working again so I haven't been doing any work involving cutting like that I noticed here that it's got a really easy way of removing the throat plates if you want to change your blades obviously so this throat plate is probably just a little bit narrower than my other one but under that easy to get in and access to change the blade I notice it's got a lot of canvas around the sides which help to direct all of the sawdust down and out the dust chute which you should be able to see there and I don't have a dust extraction at the moment but that will be something I do if I'm going to do it I mean but working outside it's not that beautiful oh I also noticed I didn't see this before when I was bringing it up and down but it does have the writhing knife attached already so the other one is a different setup for if you want to have a complete cover over the blade um, I'm assuming that they're fairly easy to take in and out so that you can take it off when you want to um, move it around oh it's got some anti-kickback things here to attach as well yeah it's good to know that requires a screw to take it off there and then obviously attach that to I think this goes with the main big guard so there's the there's the lock for the for the fence I like that it's geared at the front front and the back so that your fence will stay parallel um, I have seen some videos where people are testing these out and um, seeing how accurate it, accurate it actually stays if I was to use this at the moment I'll probably just have to carry it out and sit it onto this and work work from there to here so I've got all this space to have stuff all over uh, what else can we see I mean here's the cord looks like a decent length cord and it's got a thing to be able to 
wrap it up on it. I'm just looking at all the features that it has at the moment in terms of being a good job site saw. When I was talking to a bloke, I went to pick up something from um, something I'd bought, and I had this sitting in the back of the ute. And um, he said, oh, I've got one of those. I've had it for about 15, 20 years. And I told him what I had been using for the last six. And he goes, oh, you won't know yourself. You'll, you'll really just see what you've been missing. The accuracy is incredible. And it's powerful. Um, so 2,000 watts, same power as what I've got on that thing. But the speed in setup, in terms of setting the fence, I think I'll really appreciate. Um, and I'm really looking forward to using it for something. I'd still like to fix this up, get new brushes in it, because I do use a lot of reclaimed timber. And I think for the first rough cleaning up, I'd like to still use that and then use this for the fine work. I think that's fair enough. Still feature hunting, looking at how easy things are or not to do. So I was talking about the riving knife. You take that out, toolless. In order to get the old riving knife out, there's a lever on the side here that you pull out, lift up the old knife. Keep pulling that out. Probably easier if it's all the way up, isn't it? And you've got the blade completely covered. And I think the anti kickback pits probably hook into here or onto the back of the arriving knife there. So I'll look into that a bit later. But if you were a, a tradie traveling to and from, that is probably not going to live right there. You're probably just going to, that was so easy. You're probably going to leave it just with that one. Put your blade down so you can cut it in the ute. Have that in a tool bag. And if you really need to have that protection because you're ripping long pieces of timber or something, put it on. But for the most part, I'm probably only going to use it like that while I'm out here. If I had it set up in a workshop, I might put that on. And with the miter gauge, okay, so that allows you to bring that close or not to the blade. And also it already accounts for the fact that you're going to have it on an angle because it tilts this way. Um, and I like that it's got holes here if you wanted to do a different auxiliary fence and setting the angles that's pretty easy it'd be it'd be good if these were positive stops so you can do quick changes like from your 90 your 45 your 31.25 for your roofings type stuff or whatever um, it is a T-track, so once you've got it in there, it's not going to just lift out, so that is good. And it slides really easy. I like that. So here we are at the moment. It fairly easy to carry with the handle here. With the addition of the rubber feet that are at the back and everything wound in, you've got to make sure that you actually have the fence locked before you carry it. Ask me how I know. Um, with it wound all the way in, the saw can sit on this edge and the feet, um, and it sits fairly stable, sturdily. In terms of the other attachments, such as the blade guard and the miter gauge, 
and the saw tools, the tools for changing the blade. Um, I wanted somewhere to put those. They didn't look very good in the cardboard box. So it could be sacrilegious, but I had an old Bosch <laughs> bag that I used to keep the tie down straps in. And it holds those things fairly neatly. And I can put the instruction booklet in here. And zip it up and in this space on the top just before the saw it fits beautifully and um, I could even carry it around from this handle with that in there as well so I've got everything I need no matter where I go but like I said oh, I'm likely to be buying the trolley where this becomes attached to the trolley and you just wheel it around because I think that's going to be a much better situation for myself. Um, thanks for watching if you've made it this far. And um, probably watch my future vlogs when I start trying it out, or I'll probably just make a dedicated video for first uses, type the way it cuts, set up, and all that sort of thing. Um, because I do think it's definitely going to be a game changer from what I've been used to.